There was one young man that certainly much, much more courage than I had. He came up with the idea we should take a chance and we should jump out of the train. When I first heard of it, I thought that's absurd. I mean, where on earth? How would you do it? There was the wires and, uh, in each little window. You know how these cattle trains are. I said, that's impossible. The other boy said, no. There were a couple, two or three of them that joined in and said, well, let's, let, look, we have nothing to lose. Let's take a chance. Who knows? He says, but it's impossible. They'll catch us. They'll kill us. They will, will die jumping, whatever. No. They gave us instructions how to jump, what to do, how exactly, and just preserve your sanity. Think. Be alert, you know. Anyway, uh, the decision was that the shorter fellows Younger fellows will be the first ones out. I was among the shorter ones. I think I was about the third. There was no question. I started crying. I was frightened about the whole idea. There was no question. Nobody would listen. Either, either all or nothing. We perished together or we survived together. They picked me up. I was light as a feather. Picked me up, pushed me through that little window. And he asked, told me, hold on with your hands, and then slowly got down, and then jumped. And I remember he was giving me instructions, jump in the direction the train is going. Don't jump in the opposite direction. So I jumped. All of a sudden, I noticed a German high-ranking officer standing there with his German chutzpah, very beautifully tailored uniform, looking and watching, watching us. It was obvious that the war is at its end. I mean, everybody knew it. And he looks, he stares, he stares at us, he stares at us, and he comes over and he says the following in German. Wie ich sehe, ist euch sehr lustig. As I say, you seem to be very happy. Now, whether this was his imagination, whether some facial expression revealed this subconsciously, whatever. And all of a sudden, I find him staring at me. And looks and stares. And he says, come here, come here. So I jump off the truck, come to him. He grabs him by my arm. I, I, could, I could still feel his hand. He carries me to the uh, barrack. And the barracks were not far from the, uh, from the factory. And he places me against the wall, steps back, takes out his pistol, and he's ready to execute me. The thought, the fear, the thing, God, we're almost liberated. Uh, I became numb. And he is ready, and he opens the, the uh, pistol, and he notices he has no bullets. So he starts searching his pocket, and he finds a bullet or two, I think, and he puts it in, and he looks at me, and he's ready to close it. And a soldier came running. He's wanted on the telephone. Now, there were no wireless phones at that time. So you had to go to the building where the phone is. Orders came constantly to go, to stay, to hide, to do this. So he ran. He went away, ran practically to answer the phone. Must have been a higher ranking superior. And I'm standing there numb. I felt my feet are paralyzed, frightened. In the meantime, the boys finished loading the truck, and I hear the boys shouting, come on, you schmo, don't stand there. I, I, I was, I, I mean, I was not at my senses. So they jumped off, and they grabbed me, threw me on the truck. We left a few hours later, maybe about three and a half hours later. I was liberated. Spring of 1945. I went to my hometown, and I spent there only one night and, and was anxious to leave. The, the, the pain was just too hard to bear. Our house was the only house that was left because it was the nicest, the biggest house that was left. Either the, all the Jewish homes were all demolished, destroyed. The looting was in, 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 indescribable. I walked in somebody's house, and I saw my mother's candelabra. And that, that brought back so much pain when I recalled how she would stand and bless those candles. 
And then I noticed one man, uh, a peasant, wearing the jacket of one of my father's elegant suits. And I just couldn't bear it. And I, 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 I remember <coughs> standing at the railroad and, and literally cursing even the skies above that town. And I just left. I didn't want to go back. There were miracles happening there each and every day. And these were the things that if I were to be asked today to give one answer, why did I decide to become a rabbi? Then in all humility and utmost sincerity, I would say these encounters. I was just fully convinced that perhaps there's, this is God's way of letting me know that you were spared to do something with your life, something worthwhile. Bitterness does not restore humanity. Viciousness only intensifies viciousness. Anger intensifies anger. Brutality intensifies brutality and brings out the beast of the human being. A bit of kindness, a bit of sincerity, of compassion is what this troubled world needs desperately.